Hey everybody, it's Mike from Mike's Custom Works, and in this week's episode, we are tackling the air horn onboard air system from Valair. Now we got our constant duty onboard system by Valair. As you can see, it's up for 37-inch tires, which is great. 150 psi maximum working pressure. It's got a matte black tank. Got the compressor. It's got the airline. It's got all the attachments. Look at all this stuff that's inside this box. Got the gauge. That's going to go inside the truck. It's cool because it's got a, it's got a pressure gauge. Tells you how much air is in the tank. Plus, it has an on-off switch so that you can shut it on and off. So this doesn't run when your engine's off. That's a big key with it. With anything with air horns. Got a regulator that's here. I know this goes in the side of the tank. Um, it's a whole bunch of stuff. This is all going to be new to me. So this is going to be really insane. I also got, uh, I bought two of them because I wasn't sure of the size, but it's a three-way. It's so that I could attach the air supply, right? So as you can see the way this is shaped, one would go to one horn, one would go to the other horn, and this would come from the air supply. So that would connect the two horns together. That would go down to my switch. Now a lot of people just have it hooked up to the horn or a lot of people have it hooked up to another switch. But from Wooloo, they sell a lanyard for an air horn. So you can have that boop boop, you know, big rig style horn. And being that the, the horns are sitting on the truck and the truck's got stacks and it's lifted and it looks insane, I figured this was definitely the right attachment for this because, I mean, for starters, you push a button, it's cool, but if you could fucking grab that chain and shit, that really is going to wake people up. Especially with horns from Horn Blasters. These are my first time I ever had horns from them, and supposedly they're like top of the market people with the loudest horns that are out there. So this is going to be one hell of a freaking install. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to pull out all the stuff that's in this box, lay it on the tailgate, see what we got, and see how we're going to get it up inside this box. Now, I did the measurements a while ago. And make sure this box. Now, what's the reason for this box? See, a lot of people they attach the stuff under their truck, or they put it in their bed, or they put it inside the vehicle, they put it under the hood. This box is going to sit right above the stacks. I'm going to be cutting out holes on the side of it and putting vents in it and stuff. And the idea for this is it's going to be watertight because we also got rubber seals from 3M. You can see where it's where the tape is, and then you got this big long gasket. So that's going to come into play as well as we're putting that in. I also bought more airlines and then also this right here is a manifold. So the reason for this, that's all dusty because you can see it's been in the garage for quite some time. The reasoning for this is so that basically the air supply will come into here and then it goes out these different ports. So the two far end ports are going to be for two whole airlines. So I can do one side of the truck and I could do the other side of the truck. This is going to, I'm basically, what I'm thinking is I'm going to be mounting this on top of that aluminum box. I haven't decided yet. We're going to figure it out as we go along. And then these two lines are going to go to, um, for like an air gun or whatnot. So this is going to go for an air gun and then this is going to go for a horn. Now some people are saying, well why don't you just put the two horns on here instead of using that three way. Well because that is in play that makes a difference and what's cool with the horn blasters is that the horns can either be opened you know you can hit the horns either through a switch because there's electronic cabling for it or you could do it through air and I'm gonna do it through air because like I said I got that pull chain so there's no electronics at all to pull that horn the only thing that's gonna be electronic is that gauge on there that controls the compressor so that when my truck's off in the middle of the night the sucker doesn't turn on I can, I can turn it on once I've been on the road and I can fill up my tank now, how big is this tank 100%? I'm not sure right off the bat. I got to see if it's on here. Uh, you guys can look it up as well. It's a 2.5. Here it is, 2.5 gallon tank. So, 2.5 gallon tank. I think it's plenty of pressure uh, to really blow the horns a couple times. So, I can't wait for this, man. I know everybody's been waiting for this video.
temperature on top of this truck is 120 degrees. You see that, guys? It is hot as fuck up here. No filter, I got no filter, no filter, I got no filter. Hey man, can I get a favor? Yeah, sure, hot, no. guys it is install day so for the past couple days <clears throat> I've been getting stuff put together I've been putting the wiring together I'm putting the hoses on attaching everything to the box but one of the major issues that I've been having for literally a week straight until yesterday I finally got the part in I got the right size in. it was like literally like the 10th or 12th time I bought a part <clears throat> and finally a company sent me the right freaking size. And I'm going to show you what I'm talking about here. So, <clears throat> this right here, um, let, me, let me start off here because I'm, what I'm going to end up doing in this video is I'm going to explain everything from front to back slowly, what goes where. But I want to show you some issues that I had. So, this main line here, it's supposed to rain today too, which sucks. So, I'll be inside the cab with the truck working. But anyway, this line here is a quarter of an inch. To fit, to get a fitting inside of it, the fitting has to be three sixteenths, which I found out. Okay, so I got a little Y connector, and this was my tester on everything that I got. Okay, so why, why does this matter? Well, the lines that are coming from the air horns are three eighths, but. I mean, it's a half inch line, but it's a three eighths, three eighths fitting. So we figured out that this takes a three eighths. So I gotta connect the two horn lines that are three eighths to a Y down to a fitting that fits a quarter. And um, you know, hunting through Amazon and then hunting down like different local parts stores near me, nobody can seem to really have that part I needed, and it was really starting to get annoying. So I finally found one company that sold the 3 8 Ys. Okay, cool. So I could fit both lines from the horns, okay, because it looks like a flux capacitor. So I could connect both lines from the horns to here. This would go to a little piece of pipe, like probably about this long, and then it's going to go to a fitting. Well, sounds all fine and dandy, right? Well, that's where the problems start to arise. Uh, let me start grabbing some stuff here. So, this bag, and this bag, right? So these two bags both contradict one another. Well, <clears throat> Here it is, sorry. So from Meta, Meta Land is the name of the company. 3 8 to 3 16 brass bar. Holy shit. That's this. Okay. 
it fits in here. No problem. Does it fit on? Is it 3 16 for this? No, it's not. It does not fit inside of it. It's bigger than it. Their barb that's 3 16 does not fit on the inside of this. Ooh, my box. This barb here that's supposed to be 3 16 and I tried the other one in the package, does not fit inside the quarter inch line. And I've been having this constantly between Meadowland and there's another one called jo Joy Awas or Joe jo Joy Way Us. Joy Way Us. J O Y W A Y U S. And it's been one big giant circle jerk. I've had them send me the, the 3 16 hose inside diameter Y. When I figured out it was 3 16 when I just got it from them, that's where this piece came from. So this part here I'm holding in my hand came from that company. That's how I knew the inside diameter was 3 16 because I had ordered it from a quarter all the way down to 3 16 so I was looking at the measurements. What is under a quarter? And I go, well, let me try 3 16 Of course, one thing I realized later on, which you guys probably might have realized already, you might do it in your own life, if you're having trouble trying to figure out the inside diameter of a hose, grab a set of drill bits. So this, this one right here, for an example, says 5 16 on it. So if I take the tip of this and I stick it inside of here, and it doesn't fit, oh, it's not 5 16 So I'm going to keep going down in size of drill bits until I find one that fits in here nice and snugly, or just fits in here nice, but it has to be a little snug. Once it fits inside of there, then I know that's my measurement. Why didn't I think of that early on? It came to me like a day after I finally got the right part. But that's not the reason why I'm pointing this shit out. So, Meadowland, I'm tired of fucking squatting, so now I got belly vision. So Meadowland sends me a 3 8 to 3 16 and I got another company, which was the Joy US, sends me 3 16 to 3 8 They send me the exact same part. I bought it from two different companies, the exact same part, and I'm going to show you my problem. This is from Meadowland, and this is from Joy US. You could already see the difference. The silver one from Joy is smaller than the Meadowland one. See how different that is? Not a lot, but enough. And that enough, right? So the Meadowland one, Meadowland, whatever the fuck, doesn't fit in the hole. But the Joy slips right in. Okay. Now we know what we got going on here. And what's funny is I've been buying and returning and buying and returning because nobody could send me the right part. That was that issue. The other issue I had at one point in time on this whole setup was the compression fittings. I couldn't get the compression fittings with the right thread diameter to go into for the chucks and the fit for the manifold. And that was a circle jerk as it was. Um, because I didn't know how to describe that I need this thickness, this diameter. Um, and all they say is quarter inch NPT. Well, that, you know, that they all say it. And it, it becomes a very big hassle after a while trying to track down these parts. And, and if you are going to go jump down this road and do this build, this is going to be one of these videos I am actually going to attach. Or in the description of this video, I am going to put the links to this shit because it was a pain in the ass for me to track it down as it was. And for you guys, it's probably going to be equally as a pain in the ass because you get like half of this thing assembled. And then you go, oh, okay. I got the tank, I got the compressor, I got the wires, I got this, I got that. What do I want to do? I want to run an air horn, I want to run an onboard air system. I got two more ports in here if I wanted to run an airbags in the front and rear of this truck. At that point, I think I would need a bigger compressor and tank. But nevertheless, that's if you're running off the manifold like I have here, like this manifold that I got in the box. So I go, okay, I got one compression fitting in there. Now I need one, two, three, four, five. I need five compression fittings. Who's going to sell me compression fittings? I go back to the company, Valair, and I order from, 
on Amazon of what people also used to buy, what people bought also for the kit, and the sizes were wrong. And now I'm hunting around on Valair trying to find the right compression fittings. Now, yes, I probably could have called the company and be like, hey, I need these fucking parts. But I wanted something that I can get like the next day, not a week from now, because I wanted to film this this weekend. And I'd like to say also, even though I started rambling off today, happy 4th of July weekend, everybody. That's when this is being filmed. So, now that I know that the fitting that I need is, is this little silver guy, this is where everything now is going to go into piece very quick and easy. We'll explain that box in a second, but I'm going to jump into some other stuff right now. So this part and this part are going to go together, and they're going to go inside the cab. So I'm going to put these two guys off to, off to the side. The other thing we have here is our mounting bracket here for our gauge. Now our gauge sits in here like such. As you can see, I took it out for certain reasons, unknown to everybody, myself. So I took it out so I can reshape the metal a little bit to have it fit into a certain spot. There we go. Because I'm going to be putting this into my dashboard. Now this thing here has a light that you could run wires to if you want it lit. I'm not going to run wiring to it because I feel like it's completely and utterly pointless for myself. Um, I don't need it. it. To me, it's a pointless. It's pointless to have it on there. So I'm not going to run those wires. Okay. On the back of here, this airline that's that's here is the airline <coughs> that's coming from the tank. So on the back of the tank, and in the, the, the back of the tank, you're going to have um, a couple different spots. Let me just get these nuts on here. Try to see what the hell I do with my adjustable. Oh, it is so fucking humid in the garage right now. Whew. Holy shit. I'm fucking... I gotta get myself some tank tops, man. It is freaking hot as fuck up in here. So in the air tank, okay, as we showed before, one line goes to the regulator, which is that gray box that has a ton of wire sticking off of it. One port, I'm sorry, one port's for that. The second port that's next to it is going to be for your compressor. The compressor has its own hose on it, it's a silver hose, and you're going to tighten that one on as well. Then on the opposite side, and you can pick whichever side, it doesn't matter. Um, one side would be running for to the man, run into the manifold, which then it runs off and goes off into multiple different things that you have it set up to do. The other side is going to run to this. That's going to be in my dashboard of the truck. Now the spot that it's going in, for me it was an empty spot where all I did was stick like gum or my sunglasses in. And ever since I got these transitions, I don't wear sunglasses, even though I have sunglass prescription. Those just stay safely in their case. So I'm not going to be sticking those, you know, in there, in that spot. So I figured, I took the dash, pit, dash instrument bezel off, and I noticed that this thing just fits if I can straighten out the metal bracket on the back which was a diff little difficulty trying to bend this up because this, this piece here that we're looking at with the two holes was laying flat so with a, with, a, <clears throat> with a wrench and I had some towels on it I kept slowly prying it with my hand until I got it to the straightness that I wanted it at this would be easier with just a wrench but I'm hot and my brain ain't working right now 
Oof. It's like those days I wish I had a pool. But then I don't don't wish I had a pool because then you have all that maintenance. I got enough maintenance out here. Alright. So now that's on there. Oh. The other thing you're gonna have too is your switch. Like I said, this is gonna be all connected when you buy it, but I took it off to bend it so I didn't break any of the switches and shit. Okay, see and that pops in like that. This switch here with the on off is to turn your compressor on and off and there's two prong ends on the back of it. I suggest running this stuff to it before you screw it into your dashboard. Obviously. Now like I said, I freaking hot over here. Jesus Christ. Now there's some different things going on here. Um, for that, that's going to go, there's a small red wire that comes out of the uh, regulator that's in here. And that small red wire is going to go to the bottom of the switch. And the top portion of the switch here is going to go to a power source. Now they tell you to put it to a keyed power source and what a keyed power source is is like uh, when the key is on you know something that's powered when the key is only turned on and that's so that you don't kill your battery running the compressor well if you have any brain cells you don't turn it on when the engines when the engine is off so like for an example being that on off switch if that switch is in the off position it's never going to turn on when the key is off, when the key is out of the vehicle, that's the idea of that switch. The only time the compressor will kick on is when that switch is flipped to the on position. So, start your vehicle, let it idle out for 5 minutes or so, 10 minutes at the most, making sure that you know your vehicle is running, and then flip the on button. And then let the compressor run and fill up the tank, and that's it. And you just shut it off. Always make sure you shut you hit the off button. Once that compressor stops and that gauge shows that it's full of pressure, you just hit the off, the off switch and that's it. That compressor will not come back on until you have to turn it on. It's pretty simple at that point. So, like I said, a lot of this stuff is idiot proof, but a lot of times people are just idiots. And that's where things come into play. So let's jump inside the cabinet truck. As you can see, the box is going to sit here. My shorts are going to fall off my ass. Alright. So the box is going to sit here. And I got these two lines, these two big ass lines coming out of the ceiling. And I could really use a haircut. So basically what's going to have to happen is I'm going to have to try to bend these very carefully and they're going to have to be close to one another. That's the other part of this whole fiasco. The lines that are coming from the compression fitting to the mounting of the hood of the roof are at the same length. So that means that these guys have to be at the same length. The reason why is that at the Y when the air comes in, if one hose line is shorter than the other. So I feel like I'm gonna <sighs> I have a big box on the ground, big wooden box. It's in a weird spot and like sitting here I'm fucking pulling my shoulder. Getting old man, it sucks. Um all right, so let's take this as this is this would be this line here that's that I have sitting here. Has no, has, let's pretend, for argument's sake, this is horn number one. Okay, so horn number one is the length. Let's say is the length of my pointer finger, and horn number two is my middle finger. Now you can see my middle finger is just a little bit taller than my pointer finger. Well, when the air comes in that Y. That, that white piece that I was showing you from the tank the air is going to hit the pointer finger horn first versus the middle finger horn and it might not be really too noticeable but you might notice and you're going to hear like a burp, burp, you know like a little delay so be like burp, burp. Um, is it something that you might want maybe is it something that I'm trying to avoid hell yeah because it's just going to sound like shit so I got to make sure that these two lines are tangled up in the shit in here because I made them really long because I wasn't really sure what I was going to do with these things yet. <coughs> I have to make sure that these lines here 
both line up at the same interval okay so by looking at them they take up just basically the whole back seat from where it bends over here where that so everything's sitting on a uh, running through uh, fuel tubing so where it bends up here is there a lip up here I don't want to take that off and then find out that like half my roof comes off. Anyway, I could just feed it above these wires here. Anyway, the way this one's going to sit, what happened was I started making room back here and I got no room for my hands. The way this one's going to sit, I got to make sure where they intersect like this, you guys can see it. Alright, you can see where they both intersect. You see that one's coming from above my head and that one's coming from right over there. And they intersect about here that they're both at the same length before I put in that Y. So I'm struggle the camera at the same time. Why are you won't fucking fall over? Ooh, is it hot? Ooh. So where both these lines are, they have to be the same length heading to the Y. Okay, that's simple. You just take the measurement and come up with what the measurement's gonna be for both of them is what I'm gonna end up doing. Take that measurement. Oh, fuck it. You're an angle. And I'm going to put the Y in here. Once the Y is in here, then I'm going to put that little piece on there where I put the reducer. The reducer is going to go in there. And it's going to go down and swing around. And it's going to go into the valve for the pull chain horn. So now I know that this is going to have to get mounted here. That means the chain is definitely going to have to be somewhere up in this location here. But I did want to put it... See, that's my problem with this truck. I really don't have too many places to like hide shit. I was gonna put it up here, <coughs> but the tank line's gonna come up from my hip. And I wanted to stick it over here, but then that chain is running from the back of this cab all the way down, and it's pretty stupid. Um, I don't wanna do that. that. That's just gonna look dumb. It's gonna, be, it's gonna be tough installing this pull chain to begin with. Because um, this works out great on a single cab truck. This is a, a single, you know, this is a four dual, uh, quad cab truck. So running that horn chain is going to be tough. And it's a big unit. It's not big, but it's big enough to be a pain in the ass right now. So let's see. How are we going to do this here? How are we going to do this? So yeah, this is going to sit about dead center up here. So now I know where that's going to sit. That's good. Now I gotta find out <coughs> by playing around with the chain and where I'm gonna stick that, that pull chain and where it's gonna make the most sense. Now, a lot of people don't come back here in the back of my truck. You know, nobody ever comes in on my side because I usually have shit here and tools and oil. So if there is a hose line, for worst sake, you know, worst case scenario is running down this way into the tank, I mean, I prefer not to really see it, but I really don't give a shit at that point, you know. It's my truck and it's my build, so I just share it with the world and that's it. See how, where things came from when people see it later on, like, man, how the fuck did you do all this? Who did this? I did it. No, you didn't. I don't watch my video. So the Y is going to be there, and then the hose will snake around into the, the valve that's going to be up here somewhere, and then come down. So I'm going to start running that. Alrighty, after a wardrobe change, we finally found out a mounting location that works. So as you guys as you guys can see here, I ended up mounting it this way. I found that I could actually stick it here at this angle here. So you got this side here, which runs air to the horns, which goes in the direction of where those ones are in the back. Okay, so you see where the lines coming out of the roof are, and you can see where that is, and it's heading in that it's heading in that direction. I can't, I, my, my cardinal directions aren't working in this fucking bump on my head that I got, you know. I was playing with my Y connector. I was standing on the back end of my toilet trying to flush a turd and I slipped off, hit my head on the sink and I woke up with a solution to time travel. Go to sleep, dream about your job and then wake up and don't repeat it. Uh, anyway, so 
this back section here, this nipple here, is for the air coming out of the tank. And it's actually faced towards the, the lip of the wall here, as you can see. So my idea is that it's going to go that way. Either it's going to go that way, or I could snake it up through there, and it runs along the channel so it's away from this fucking lock. And then I put one screw in here, I tucked the rest of the chain down, which of course fell out of hole, but that can always get tucked in. And I left enough of it left over the chain, I didn't cut it in case I ever have to do a repair down the line for whatever reason. Um, this isn't something you should be yanking on, you know, like an asshole. Uh, so the way I got this here is you can see how this, when it pulls back here, as it pulls back, this will open the air line to go to there. And I have it pretty snug. So as you see, when I just give it a little pull, and I'm pulling straight down, so I got it to where I could pull down. And as you can see, just a little tug, I'm already activating it. And then as the compressor turns back on. But this right here, you could see, like, and I've already done this a couple times. And you could see, and, it, and it's in a comfortable spot too, because it's like, it's not really that noticeable. It's kind of hidden a little bit. Not that I wanted it hidden, but it's hidden. Oh my god, it's in fucking rain. story of my life. I'll shut the doors and I'll be working in the back of the truck anyway with those, but wrap this up quick before it fucking starts downpouring out here. It's in a comfortable spot where it's not going to get in the way of me getting in and out and it's nice and snug so it's just a little tight yug, tight, tight pull and let me go shut the fucking doors. It's fucking rain. I can't believe this shit. Alright guys, so I was able to get the two grounding wires in the back. I got the hose fed up through there up to the valve. I got that all connected. So now what I'm running right now is the power wires. And here's a little tip and trick for everybody. So if you're running wires, I'd always advise you run them from the engine bay firewall into the cab. It's going to be easier. And the first thing you want to do is take as many wires that you're going to have to run. So I got to run two power wires. One goes to the compressor and the other one is going to run to the switch on the dash. So I taped them together in electrical tape and ran them through the firewall um, grommet. And they're like a nice little tight snake, probably about good 8 inches, 9 inches long, nice solid. And then you just unravel it. It's so much easier to run stuff with tape on it because it's all grouped together. And it's a solid piece that you're running. And then you just untape it to reroute everything that has to work. It's got to go. So it's a little tip for everybody. If you're trying to route stuff, as you can see here, as it's coming through the firewall, right, I could pull it from here. And the big solid red is going to go through the hole here to go to the compressor where there's a plug for it, which is a bigger wire. And that's really it, guys. we got a couple more wiring to go. But uh, like I said, I'll do like a good overview on how everything is wired and set up and the way everything works so that you guys can do the same thing on your own vehicle. All right, guys. So... We got everything installed yesterday, and we ran into a couple issues. But anyway, we got all the, got all the wiring done yesterday, as, I, as you guys can see here. And I'll go down this road uh, in about a second or so. So one of the issues is the thing kind of sits a little far back. So anyway, I, I put the the quick disconnects. I just kind of threw them in there quick because this was just during testing purposes yesterday. So I wasn't really trying to get, you know, fancy with shit yet. So I threw these guys in here so the air wouldn't leak out. The uh, compression fittings. The two pieces here, they had to actually get tightened in, these two plugs. I didn't have them in tight enough so air was leaking out. So those guys had to get completely flush against the block. And that stopped leaking. As you can see, I have all the wiring done down below. You have two wires that are coming out of the box. The big red wire is going to the battery. This black wire is going to the switch that's on the dash next to the uh, gauge that tells you how much pressure is inside the tank. Two grounding wires come out and behind this panel over here, which is not the easiest thing to get to, I put the grounding wires up against that in there. And that was basically it for the wiring for that. Um, obviously some stuff has to get tightened up and put back together, but we're not done yet. So that's why everything still looks a little, uh, disheveled. And all the wiring and stuff is going to be cleaned up. And, um, there's also floor mats and interior parts that go back together. So you won't see the wiring at all. And then the hose line, 
that's running right there that you see that runs into the back to the box is a hose line that runs for that gauge. Um, that's it for really getting the compressor and all that stuff, all that jazz put together and then of course those two wires, the wire for the on off switch for the compressor and the um, compressor uh, wire, power wire comes from the battery. If you have a power water, power water, <laughs> power wire that comes from the battery to the compressor and then the, there's a wire from the compressor that goes to the pack that's on the back of the, uh, of the tank and that controls, I'm looking for my batteries here, I'm going to put them back in my room, hold on a second. Alright, now that we got another battery, okay, so on top of the uh, horns as you see up here, the wiring, it's a solenoid. Um, I didn't know this, but I, I learned it last night and this morning, is you need a way to open and close that solenoid, which allows the air from the air lines to escape. So the air comes up through here, and it has the switch here, which is the pull chain switch, which that one's leaking, of course. So I ordered, a, ordered two, to, two of them from a couple different companies. But anyway, you can see how the hose line goes to a divider or a splitter goes into the horns. And I was pulling on this yesterday and the horns weren't working. What the fuck? Well, I, I looked up online and it turns out that you actually need to connect those solenoids that are up top, which opens and closes. So how do you do that? So two, one wire from each solenoid has to go to a ground and the two wires that don't go to a ground go to the switch. So you put both of those wires together and you stick them on a switch on one end. On the other end, this runs to the battery and this allows you to open and close your solenoids so that air can flow into your horns. Pretty interesting stuff. Pretty simple. So I'm basically, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to make it look pretty right now. I just want to get it to work and hear what the horns sound like because I'm curious about it. I've been dying since I ever looked at these horns and been dying since I ever had them on the truck. So I'm just going to run this shit quick. I'm going to ground them to the roof. Um, it's probably where I'm going to put the grounds. I haven't decided yet. I'm going to connect the two wires ground them somewhere, probably I'll ground them down in the, in the engine bay, take the two power wires, run them to a switch, take the other end, put it to the battery, and then just obviously once, you know, I'm going to get my truck up and running, get the air tank filled up with air, flip the switch, blow the horns, wake up my neighbors, and then make everything look pretty. It's uh, 6.45 in the morning. It's uh, 10 o'clock somewhere. <laughs> that was great. Creeping up from the heathens Got will, got fight, got pride, got reason If they wanna go eat, then you know I'm gonna feed them If you're coming for me, hope you're ready for a demon I got eyes in the back of my head, I'm seeing Take me for granted and you know I'm leaving I'ma take what's mine with the webs I'm weaving I could take this crap from seeing to believing Got a taste for blood in my tongue
keeps bleeding from the words I spit. So sharp, so freezing, so cold. Behold, frostbite, they feeling. I could tear you apart, or I could go heal them. Don't believe in fake, don't believe in ceilings. I just need a taste, and my mind starts peeling. I don't pace myself, I grind on no kneeling. Got lust for change, I just love the feeling. Uh. I ain't gonna give up. Got too little time, I'ma live up. Head down, push forward through the tough times. Cause anything worth doing is a tough climb. And I ain't gonna give up. Got too little time, I'ma live up. Head down, push forward through the tough times. Cause anything worth doing is a tough Cause climb. Cause I'ma live life for the fight, yeah, I'm here to get it. I got drive, got sight, always have a vision. I go by. I be in my feelings, I'ma be fine, need time and I'll soon be winning I live life for the fight, yeah I'm here to get it I got drive, got sight, always have a vision I go by at night, I be in my feelings I'ma be fine, need time and I'll soon be winning I can feel the blood creeping up from the heathens Got will, got fight, got pride, got reason If they wanna go eat, then you know I'm gonna feed them If you're coming for me, hope you're ready for a demon I can feel the blood creeping up from the heathens